Well, mate, we've been uh, very fortunate over the last couple of years to meet a lot of heroes of ours. And obviously, in this particular episode, we get to meet one of the best of all time for us. You know, uh, in- absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, Boris Blank. I mean, absolute legend of electronic music. Um, obviously, we love Yellow. We spoke about Yellow before, along with Dieter Meyer. I mean, real heroes of ours. And yeah, I mean really honoured to speak to him and who would have thought when we went and saw Yellow in Hamburg a few years ago that one day we'd actually speak to Boris Blank yeah mate that was uh, seven years ago I remember yeah 2017 still got the post up there yeah and that's the only time I ever played live do you know what I love about all these people we meet and Boris is certainly including him what a lovely guy yeah I mean it was so down to earth I mean obviously it's all about this his new um, solo yeah. album which is stunning but sonically yeah. it's a brilliant piece of music um yeah. and people should investigate it and uh, look at his solo work as well as yellow yeah, you're right i think everyone needs to try and grab a copy of this especially if you're fans of yellow you know this this is still containing the legacy but it's very much a boris blank album so should we dive in mate yeah everybody mr boris blank on the electronic cafe enjoy do bow bow Hello, you lovely Electronic Cafe people. As you know, Mark and I have been very lucky to meet some incredible legends over the years. And today's guest is certainly no exception. Uh, one of our all-time heroes, Mr. Boris Blank. Welcome to the Electronic Cafe, sir. It's lovely to have you here. Pleasure for me. Thank you. Brilliant. And congratulations on Residence. Um, it's sounding fantastic. Uh, there seems to be a, a mix of trance ambient and electro and a real district distinction between the tracks was that the plan for the album when you you know this this uh um at the beginning this was just a job for me because a very famous architect in switzerland mario botta is his name he uh built uh, a therm you know like uh uh, a, a thermal bath uh, near zurich which was uh fascinating me by the way because it has a uh, they invite me when the building was only in a very rough, the ground, uh, 2000 years ago, the Roman built this, these terms and these sources of hot water. Um, yeah. And that was for the first time this, uh, to see the archaeological uh, um, work on this, uh, on this platform was very nice and interesting for me. So they asked me whether I can do some music for the, the 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 part in the in the, in, in this path where you have some rooms with huge uh, uh, projection on the ceiling you can oh. lie on a on an island uh, another room is just a sole bath they call it a, a salt bath totally black you only have some leds many leds which looks like uh, a little universe there a cosmos yeah. the other thing is a, a, a two floor winter garden with very exotic plants like in a jungle you have some butterflies flying around whatever so that was a, a very sort of interesting uh, job for me and uh, I, I say okay I do it uh, I mean first of all I said if they do it immersive that we have a lot of loudspeakers in each the rooms sure. that we can do it in sort of immersive mixing that this really is something special and uh, they say, yes, we can organize this. Uh, the other thing, of course, I was afraid to 
uh, to, you know, it's like if you walk on a mountain, you're on the top and you can fall down on this or the other side. One side is the kitsch and the other side is the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the esoteric uh, sort of yeah. uh, Celtic uh, harps or pan flutes, whatever. I don't want to be in this league of music. I said, I tell them, I do some music which each track should have a little storytelling. And uh, yeah, at the end, and that was the reason why I uh, released the album in this way, was people asking at the cast when they go out, uh, can I buy this music? So that was the initial spark to go on and make uh, like a double album now and even a um, Blu-ray for yeah. the immersive mixing Dolby Atmos and another yeah. one which is just stereo. Amazing, amazing. Going back to the beginning of your sort of career, I mean, your interest in music started as a child and you sort of became fascinated with recording sounds. So so what did you start doing? Did you just recording outdoor stuff or creating your own stuff through electronics? How did that start that process? I, the most of it I, of course, create. Of course, there are some uh, since back to the BBC noise albums, whatever. I have a huge collection, a big, big library from the time when I really go out and with a microphone recording, field recordings. I was a, a hunter and a, a collector at the time. Still today, when I hear oh. some beautiful uh, sounds, I, of course, immediately record that. And uh, of course, I start from scratch as a, as a painter, as a canvas. And I do have a lot of folders full of uh, sounds, which has, of course, a name and uh, the names exactly i know exactly what in which folder kind of uh, moods and uh, patterns or uh, just sounds are in the in the in the folder and i start with one uh, color speech uh, speak uh, one uh, sound then the other one until it's like a patchwork until i see a certain a certain form of something and i hold myself on this form and I uh, know this is the direction to the final track. And right. this always surprised myself what's coming out at the end, you know. Uh, I, I create music like, uh, 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 like this. This is my, the working process, more or less. a number of reports and some have said you've got a hundred thousand samples in your library categorized and some have said five hundred thousand samples i mean how many how big is your sample library boris uh i can't say uh, I, I would say that a, a million uh perhaps wow. of course i I'm, i wow. stopped counting them you know each folder i'm like uh what do you call these little animals the squirrels they are <laughs> They dig the nuts uh, somewhere, and yeah. like uh, 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 the, the squirrel knows exactly where to dig, dig it out again. So I have thousands of folders full of sounds, and still I have them uh, from the the Fairlight uh, time uh, sampling time. So I uh, it's it's huge. I still uh, collect some sounds, and you know what happens is uh, with the new technology today. Uh, the music technology, you can pick them up and you yeah. totally uh, misbuild them and you you uh, you recycle the sound, so to say. Yeah. Well, one, of the, one of the questions that I had written down, which you've kind of answered a little bit, is that the way you compose your music, it is like a canvas and it's like building blocks of sounds yeah. that come together to form the, the, the overall picture rather than the traditional composition 
ways of you know writing a score or writing the music and your new album resonance is a beautiful sounding record i mean it's very um anthemic it's very uh cinematic sound sounding record but it's got that Boris Blank, yellow DNA going through it. There's certain little sounds that crop up and there's certain little key changes which are so uh, reminiscent of your work. You know, it always happens that on each album uh, of the last 45 years, uh, there are some instrumentals. So yeah. uh, Boris Blank instrumental sounds. There was Ciel Ouvert, but there are always some uh, some moody tracks on the albums of Yellow. So this is now a pure uh, ambient or a kind of a mellow yellow album without Dieter, you know. Before yes. Dieter came into the studio, it always was just the sound of Boris Blank because I'm yep. an egomanian kind of a musician which kind of bring down the music without anybody because I need like a monk up the hill in a in a in a, a closer, uh, he needs to be alone to create or be oh. creative within the music. Dieter appears and he walks through the uh, the the sound worlds of Boris Blank, and he immediately always invent a, a sort of a, a, a protagonist's uh, a, a kind of an actor walk through the pictures uh, through these yeah. uh, sound pictures. you guys meet Boris how did you and Dieter meet yeah that was like 45 years ago and uh Dieter I remember he was in a punk band in a real you know like oh, a really? naughty, some naughty boys around him and he was shouting and I remember I had to together at the time uh together with with uh, Carlos Perón yes. we had sort of a uh, a, a little flat and instead we we are cooking in the kitchen we have some little mixing desk we have some tape recording systems there a few synthesizers are there already uh, uh, we only created some uh, cassette sure. you know like on, on on cassettes at the time and we showed this to uh, to a, a record store in Zurich he was involved in some very low uh, final uh, financial uh, little productions of maxi versions of 12 inches whatever and we brought this guy a cassette and say, uh, would you do a, a, a production with this? And he said, I like the music, but I think it needs a singer. And the singer was Dieter Meyer. I remember exactly on a Saturday, like uh, 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, Dieter Meyer appears in this kitchen. And he was, you know, as he was usually a sound, uh, uh, a punk singer, he starts singing, shouting so loud that we have to leave uh, a week later the room there and the flat was was quit, you know, quitted. You yeah, know? Yeah. So we are then uh, built our first setup in the studio because Dieter has also like a, a four, uh, four track uh, TAG machine there, whatever. So we built in his atelier at the Red Factory in Zurich our uh, first little studio. That was the beginning. Two weeks wow. later, we already have our first show in a uh, on a on a fashion show in a, in a cinema in Zurich. As Dieter was on stage, and uh, you know, in the in this in the old cinemas, you have this orchestra which yes. you can't see. They just play yes. on the knees somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Two of us, me and Peron, we are afraid, you know, like the, the audience. Uh, we don't want to, we don't want to be, uh, uh, that they, they see us. So they just see our hairstyle, not more, you know. And at the end, everybody was clapping and wow, big success. Then we come up like, you know, like, and say, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, hey, that's hey. the, yeah. <laughs> love that.
quite a man of many interests. So outside of your music, what else do you do? What what other hobbies have you got? Because at the time or now? Or well, now? I see. I see oh, I now, see. I, you know, I I'm very happy to uh, to have a daughter stock. You know, like uh, daughters when they are uh, young, they want to have a dog and say, "Papa, yeah. please, I would like to have a dog." And they say, "No, no, no, no." <laughs> and she says, please, Papa. And finally, my wife, Patricia, she said, Boris, please. I go out and walk the dog <laughs> myself as well. And I said, OK, but promise. And now the daughter is not living at home anymore. She has a, her own flat. And I was walking the dog or I go for a walk uh, every day, uh, an hour. And, and it's very good for my health. I swim. I'm sort of a little bit sporty. In my age, I was sporty my whole life, but now I still go for a swim for three, four times a kilometer a, a week. And uh, this is my element. Water yeah. is my element. You're putting us to shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm happy. Water is my element. When you when you go out, do you always have a recorder with you just in case you hear something? Yeah, I, you know, the, the uh, I have my my own made or homemade application called the yellow fire yeah we're going to speak about that yeah, yeah. you know this one yeah yes. of course i do have this always with me and if i have a little idea or just drawing a, a few notes uh in the forest by walking and uh, i record this on on this little uh, uh little stu pocket studio my yellow fire we're going to speak That's about right. that i mean I was in a band, me and Andy was in bands together and I was synthesizers and I was with the samplers. And I remember when I got my first sampler, it became a bit obsessive where you was like listening to everything and thinking, oh, I can stretch that loop, that reverse that. I mean, it does, it does become a little bit obsessive, doesn't it? And it opens up your mind to sounds and you think, oh, that would be good recorded. That would be good manipulated. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's like, if, if you're... It's a, whole, it's a whole new world. It's, it's a cosmos. Yeah. In itself, yeah. you know, because you you can uh, go into even uh, to a, a molecular structure of a, a certain uh, surface and you see, wow, you can manipulate like you can play golf within a sound and you totally um, uh, misbuild, so to say, the sound. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you transport, uh, so to say, um, you, you smash a snowball to a wall record this with two microphones and then uh, you, you transport this two octa octaves lower, you have one of the best bass drums, you know. Yeah. And one interesting thing was if you have a scotch, you know, a tape, yes. and you, you put it over the microphone and make... Yeah. And you transport this two octaves uh, lower, you have the perfect thunderstorm. First, wow. the flash following by the thunder which is uh, beautiful mm. it's still my world it's it's sign it's for for me this is science we yeah have in in yeah. sounds i read a story where i think it was the human league instead of a a hi-hat they had an aerosol <laughs> <laughs> yeah why not Boris, we must ask you, um, one of the most iconic songs ever is Oh Yeah. Yeah. And it appeared in uh, one of the most iconic 80s movies, the Ferris Bueller Day Off and the, the Ferrari scene. How did how did that happen? There is uh, this um, good friend, Ian Trigoning, which was the owner of Do It Records at the time where he was together with Adam and the Ants, lots of... Uh, famous people uh, in or bands in, in England. He was also the guy who brought Yellow together with Billy McKenzie. He was oh. uh, in New York at the time. So he was uh, sort of, how can I say, he was responsible for Yellow at the time in New York. 
Yeah. And there was, uh, I can't remember the director again from uh, the Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And he asked him whether he has an idea of a title track for this key scene with this Ferrari. Uh, and and uh, he said, yeah, that he has a, uh, he's managing a band from Switzerland, Yellow. They have a track, oh yeah. And the guy uh, was listening to the track and say, exactly, that's the one uh, which I'm looking for. It's funny when I talk to my younger, my daughter's friends and I say, oh, I'm interviewing Boris Blank and they go, well, who's Boris? And as soon as I say, <laughs> as soon as I say, oh yeah, yeah they go, oh, him, him. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it's uh, the, the uh, signature sound of Yellow. Still yeah. after 40 years, it's now I know. Uh, 40 years, like 84 release and yeah. Still today, they use it for commercials, for films, yeah. whatever. It's alive, you know, which keeps us alive. The circus well, yellow still al is alive. Correct me if I'm wrong. What did Dieter have full lyrics for that song at one point? That's a, sort of a little secret. But to be honest, we oh. we try as Dieter always was totally full of idea. Just uh, like two, three bars of my music, he comes up with. The ideas, beautiful ideas, but Maybe. in this case, we try um, to come up with some, yeah, some lyrics and some, some, uh, some vocals. And he said, Boris, I don't have an idea what to do with this song. And I say, Dieter, think about you're on an island, you're you're hanging there, beautiful weather, uh, Caribbean feeling. You have a drink in your hand. What will you say? And then he said, oh, yeah. And then comes <laughs> the moon, beautiful, the sun, even more beautiful. Oh, yeah. And I was just there with, the beginning was this do, bow, bow. Nice. That was sort of the beginning. And uh, we never thought that this uh, track ever happened somewhere uh, until uh, Ian Trigoning come up with the with the, with the, with his phone call and say hey they take it for this film so nice. that was sort of our our passport to 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 our success in in, in America yeah. today yeah. still when I go uh, to New York or when I fly to LA whatever and it, you know the situation you have to wait on the border the guy um, <laughs> and say hey 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 next and you say yeah. He reads in the passport musician or music producer, say, is there anything which I should know about your music? And say, oh, yeah, chica chica. What? You're that guy? And then he keeps the stamp immediately. <laughs> so this is still today a passport for, for the entry of uh, to America or wherever. I, that was one of the most iconic films of the 80s and that that music still that music still is so recognizable for that for that film it's like perfect do, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> do, oh, yeah. do you know I, do you know what i love about that though boris it still sounds as fresh now as it did in the 80s yeah. it has it's it's timeless it's a timeless track it's fantastic and boris going back to collaborations like you mentioned obviously you work with a fantastic billy mckenzie uh, and Shirley Bassey, right, and the Rhythm Divine. I mean, you worked with some incredible people. Um, were they in the studio with you, or did they do it remotely, or did you get to meet both? I, th I think you must have met Billy by the sounds of it. But um, yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, Billy was uh, the Rhythm of uh, the Rhythm of Divine was yes. uh, was written by Billy. The lyrics and the melodies was Billy's idea, and he. Uh, was in Zurich at the time to record any other things were for Yellow. And uh, that was like uh, 10 minutes for lyrics and another 10 minutes for two takes uh, in the recording room. Say, Boris, you know, ah, yeah, well, do it like this. And he thought about uh, the voice. He he was already connected with the range of, uh, of, of Shirley Bassey's voice and uh, and the the, wow. what is the pitches she, she cannot sing up and everything yeah. 
And at the end, when we are in contact with Shirley and she flows to Zurich, I pick her up in my old uh, Lincoln Continental. I thought, wow, this is sort of impressive. Wow. <laughs> and she said, at the end, she said, Boris, next time, please come with an adult car. You know, <laughs> that was not, not <laughs> enough for her. She's a, she's a little diva, but that's nice. And Billy yes. was there. Uh, Billy was there in the studio uh, to help her if there are some. But she, uh, uh, I mean, first of all, when she enters the studio, Billy was there and she, uh, he said, I, I have to go. He can't stay. He was so nervous because she, she was there. And, and uh, for her, that was like two or three takes she needs. And she's perfectly uh, um rehearsing of course uh, the songs she's a perfect interpreter yeah. and uh, that was like a half an hour and uh, we we're going out for dinner at the at the in the evening and that's it so I don't know if you can see it actually, but I'll, I'll, you can see there. We that's the life we, me and Mark came and saw your tour in 2017. Would you do that yeah, again? You have seen Yellow in 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 Hamburg. You, you yeah, we went to Hamburg, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hamburg, saw you in okay. Hamburg. Yeah, it's amazing, and and the sound and everything. And we came away blowing away, but we just said, I wonder if you guys would do that again. Is it something you'd consider, or is that just that's done and it's it's parked, or would you do another? Tour again? Yeah, I'm afraid, or I guess this was, you know, because uh, after all these years, Dieter, uh, to see Dieter on, her, on his knees and say, Boris, we have to go for life, please, let's do it. And oh, I always said, no, I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it looks a bit dodgy if you go on stage with a laptop and you start the laptop and shake your ass and, and, <laughs> and, and with your head and, and try or pretend to be live. This, that was never my my cup of tea, but to go on stage like with a band, with like a, a, a six piece uh, um, uh, brass section, with percussionist, with a drummer, with uh, three people backing vocalist, Dieter, me, uh, this this is something else. But it costs a lot of time. Eight eight months we just rehearsed in Berlin. I was flying a few times to Berlin to to rehearse in Berlin, and then at the end. To be honest, it costs a lot of money. You know, we sure. lost we lost some money with this tour, and it it just it's a, 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 the the break even is when you do it like I would say two hundred days, and you have two sets go to Munich from yeah. Munich to London, yeah. and they always build up the stage. Otherwise, you don't make money at all. For me, it was a great experience because to be on stage and to to know that people coming to the concert, they're all big fans of yours, and to feel the the reaction, to get the the, the reflection of the people, this is a, a, a power palace, you know, it's, it's unbelievable yeah. what you get back. It looked and sounded fantastic. I mean, we, we flew from the UK, especially for the show, and we had a couple of days in Hamburg, so it, for us, it, it, it was tremendous. I mean, it, it was an amazing uh, experience. Yeah. To Thanks, thanks so much. This is a great compliment. And we, we speak to people and we say we was at this show and people were like, what? You was actually there? And like, you yeah. know, a lot, I mean, a lot of people would have loved to have been there, but it was. It looked and sounded amazing. It's phenomenal. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks. <laughs> an offer from you know the whole eastern part of europe we had uh, they are planned our our uh, management in germany planned moscow they are uh, um, uh, you name it all kind of warsaw in the whole eastern 
uh, of Europe touring, and we said mm, it's it's a bit too hard for for two older boys to do that. We we, we are back in the studio. I'm looking forward to uh, to hit the, the main street again of Yellow, of course, and uh, and you know being creative is also you need some time. Is there a new Yellow album coming down the road? Sometimes. You know, as a, as I told you before, as a painter, of course, I always have a few. Yes. Uh, tracks uh, on this in these folders and now I go through the last 20 years and there still are some tracks which you still can use there are like 70 80 tracks left in in my in, on my uh, hard disk so and you know it's it's like uh, when we have done the last I think there are two albums with uh, the last one was 40 years yellow so yes. I have to go back, I grab in all the kind of folders and, and uh, hard disks. And whenever I hear even the first album, I can say some something is uh, in the music still is timeless. I still can hear most of the tracks still today. Oh. And I do understand now, you know, when I when our daughter was young and she's going to the kindergarten or to the first two, three school years, you have these evenings where, where the parents come together and there are some parents, uh, mothers or fathers came to me and say, you know, Boris, I love yellow music, but I can't hear it anymore because my young boy listened from in the morning till the evening, <laughs> only yellow music. And this was a big compliment, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, because there is something in the music which is, I don't know. It it has a secret or something playful in the in the sounds, whatever. They uh, children love it, and also, uh, I can say today, uh, listening back to uh, there are two or three songs which I think, bah, they are a little bit dated, but all the rest I still can hear today. first track i heard of yellow was boss ditch at a nightclub and i was like i said to my friend holy shit what's this and i actually asked the dj what it was and he told me so that's when we found you and, and but the one thing i remember reading some one press guy said these guys are great great music the only problem is i think they may be too ahead of their time and i oh, thought wow. yeah wow. yeah seriously and, and that's all and you as you say you go through the back catalog right up to toy and a point exception yeah it still sounds really yeah. fresh really fresh it's it's still fresh yeah you know what it is i think uh, one reason for it is you never should look at uh, uh, to the left or to the right uh, what happens what's trendy today and uh, if you find yourself and you still have fun like i do have uh, like a child when i start with a uh, with a track i'm 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 electrified you know and totally <laughs> I can't wait where is the journey is going to in the track. So I think I it should always make, uh, make fun to create anything, even all kind of arts. It, mm -hmm. It's it's the, the inner, uh, yeah, the fun to work and yeah. stop it for it. I mean, you're one of those artists that people will hear a track and they'll say, that's Boris Blank, that's Yellow. There's not many people that sound so distinctive and so uh -huh. like you and what a compliment it's, it's a you know i think yeah, we love electronic music we've got thousands of albums we've got loads of electronic music you can play a thousand songs and put one yellow song in there and you'll say that's yellow that's yes. funny it's funny yeah thanks this is a big thanks. compliment i i what, what's very interesting i i just uh I uh, sent an email this morning to Wolfgang Flüher. He's he was the the the, the first electron electronic drummer of Kraftwerk, and he yes. was in Zurich last week. And I missed to meet him because I never met one uh, person of Kraftwerk, even Ralph or Florian, never. But a lot of people always sort of think about yellow Kraftwerk, and we never we never mm. get together so far. And, uh, this uh, Wolfgang Flüher was in Zurich and has a little 
a show in a uh, in in a in a, a club in Zurich, and I couldn't make it because I was ill. I had a coughing, oh, no. and now we're in contact, and and uh, uh, perhaps there will be a marriage somehow with one of Kraftwerk and Boris Blank. Who knows? Oh, that'd be amazing. Did, did Wolfgang mention me and Andy? <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. Wolfgang, me and Andy are putting on an electronic cafe show in London in March, and Wolfgang is uh, our headliner. Is that true? Wow. Yeah. So if you want to come to London as our guest, you'd be more than welcome, Boris. <laughs> so you are, are on stage with him or what? No, we, um, last year, we put on our first live event, Electronic Cafe One, and it was so successful. We've expanded it this year. And we've, okay. um, I mean, we know Peter de Gaulle. We know, we know Wolfgang we, from, from the past. So we asked Wolfgang to headline, and he's headlining our show in March. And so, Mark Reed is DJ. Mark, yeah, Mark he, he mentioned something that he's working with a person with the name Duggan. Duggan. Yeah, Duggan? Peter, Peter Dugal. Yeah, Peter, Dugal. Yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, he's yeah. a musical collaborator. He's a lovely guy. But on the, sh the same show, we've got um, Wolfgang Fleur is headlining. Tiny Magnetic Pets are second on the bill, Peter de Gaulle's on the bill, and Mark Reeder, our mutual friend, is, right. is DJing for the night. So that's on March the 16th this year. Cool. cool. Well, you you sent me the details. I might be in London anyhow, somewhere. I don't know whether in in Italy or in... in I have to met uh, uh, to visit uh, Ian Trigoning as well. Me and my wife, we are looking forward to to visit London anyhow in the, in the next future. We'd love to do that for you. If you want, if you've got the time, we'll make that happen. Uh, it'd be amazing. Cool. Cool. Absolutely amazing. I know we're running out of time soon, Boris, but I couple yeah. of questions. I, I read something. You've got a huge love for classical composers, um, like classical music. It's been quite influential. Who are the composers that you love? There are a lot of uh, composers which are really a uh, uh, fan of it. One is, of course, Shostakovich. I like a lot. I like Pierre Boulez, uh, the, the art uh, what do you call it? Uh, music concrète. Uh, I like uh, Giorgi Ligeti. I do like uh, somehow because it's a very conceptual music. Uh, Karl Heinz Stockhausen, yes. but it's a bit too academic for me. And of course, I, I I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Rachmaninoff. I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Mozart. Even at the end. Yes. Uh, if you if you like some real uh, baroque music, but um, uh, there are many others which I which I appreciate. Yeah, that's amazing. And and you mentioned Pink Floyd earlier. I believe yeah. that was the first concert, wasn't it? That you went to was that the first gig you went to? Was Pink Floyd? I have seen the Pink Floyd nineteen hundred sixty eight. I'm not sure, but oh. I think sixty eight in Zurich in a very little club here in Zurich in the Haziland. The name was Haziland. Yeah. And uh, it was so loud, you know, people just disappear. <laughs> I was <laughs> two or three people are at the end in the room because it, it really was unusual loud. And you, you have this, uh, this, this uh, water oil lamp uh, projection at the wall. Yes. Oh, yeah, the acid uh, trip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that was, for me, it was very, very funny. And you know, Pink Floyd as uh, all kind of uh, uh, underground or uh, psychedelic bands at the time, they invented the music. They believe what they are playing. This yeah. was a new area, a new horizon of uh, uh, some electronic uh, involved yeah. uh, music as well. And uh, I still, uh, I still hang on this time or in this time of Pink Floyd's. Uh, I would say the I would say the metal from metal and the the Amagama. This yes. is so beautiful music. I mean, it's it's still today timeless. Also, yeah, very much so. I think my first album was uh, Relics by Pink Floyd. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> with the birds. 
Yes. Birth, yes. the track on the river. Yeah, great, great. One of our final questions is that, I mean, that album behind Andy there. Conversions with Malia, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark and I were out record shopping in Berlin with Mark Reader. And he, he literally walked into the record shop, went, you need this, you need this. And he put this in my hands. I went, yep, I'm having right. that. It's a good, <laughs> very good sounding album. Great yeah. album. The, the quality is very, very it's good. It's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Uh, Mark Reader did one of your remixes, didn't he? He did Vicious Games. Yes, yes, yes. Which is, which is a which is a great mix. Would um, would you allow Mark Reader near your remixes again? <laughs> uh, if he if he kindly asks me, why not? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. We thank you for your time. The final question, which we always ask everybody we speak to, what would be your Desert Island disc? Phew, this is very hard to say. <laughs> there are so many, uh, many, uh, as I as I uh, yeah. told the story about, oh, yeah, on the island, I would say, oh, yeah, do, bow, bow. <laughs> you never ending, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, know. Guys, we, we we love resonance um i hope we, we know it's going to be as successful as it should be uh we can't thank you enough well, you, you... Andy, uh, have a great week and uh it was a, pl a pleasure for me now uh, likewise you, Boris, uh, you know you're seriously one of the pioneers that we love so thank you so much for being part of our musical tapestry it means a lot and as i said it's been a real honor for us so thank you thanks thanks so Boris. thank you Boris. Right. appreciate All it right. thank you thank you So everyone, really hope you enjoyed that fantastic interview with the incredible Boris Blank. Boris, sir, thank you for Mark and I for coming on the show. Absolute honour to have you on. You know, you truly are a legend and a massive part of Mark and I's musical tapestry. And, you know, as my buddy does such an amazing job of playing new tracks throughout uh, this episode with the album, this one, we hope you enjoy it and you go and buy it. And while we talk about amazing music, don't forget, it's very, very close now. March the 16th. 229, Great Portland Street, London. Wolfgang Fleur is headlining, and he's surrounded by a fantastic cast of people, including Tiny Magnetic Pets, Peter Dugol, and DJ, the incredible Mark Reader. Get your tickets. I'll ask my bro to put a link at the bottom, but you really got to attend this. It's going to be an amazing, amazing event. Don't miss the opportunity to be in a room with two incredible legends. And I'm not talking about me and Mark. Get your tickets now. Just go on to Dice or Gigantic, but the links are below. Look forward to seeing you all there. Cheers, guys. <laughs>